Well, companies are doing a very good job every time better uh, to keep up with the bad guys or protecting the, the network in the inside. They are finding that many users are actually contracting and going into web services like Office 365, Salesforce, .com, Dropbox, uh, just to name a few, and many other more now, and looks like those uh, keep on growing. And they are, you know, kind of uh, bypassing all the security that we normally do for the application that reside in our organization. And while people are putting on the webs, uh, on, the, on the DMC uh, devices like proxies, uh, like uh, WebSense, uh, BlueCode, uh, uh, our next generation IPS, like the XGS that we have, or Palo Alto XGS, I mean, many devices that uh, certainly produces logs that can give you some idea of what is it that the people are going. But monitoring those logs is kind of hard and, and, and determine whether they're going to a risky site, you don't have that knowledge whether they're you know, uploading big chunks of data, it is very hard to make sense uh, out of those uh, raw logs. Also, when people go into those sites, they create user IDs and they define passwords. And you suspect, cor and correctly so, that in many cases, they use the corporate password. This is the one that they use to log in into Active Directory, and that's, for example, the one that they remember well, and what prevents them from actually using that password uh, into those uh, those web uh, those uh, remote applications? Nothing really. And then, uh, if the user is either outside the network completely, working from from home or uh, from a cafe, or or they leave the organization, well, they have access to that uh, to that organization to that uh, data that was actually put in there. This is what is calling the industry the shadow IT problem. What is IBM's response into that? Well, we can put on the DMC, we can put a virtual machine that collects those logs and actually forward those to the closest node in the world that, that is uh, via, you know, via DNS, we determine what is the closest uh, site and by analyzing those logs and we put a bunch of technology in this cloud that is completely transparent to you but what we do is that we have the capability of doing discovery very nice determine what is it that people are going what type of site what type of users uh, we can uh, because we have the X-Force database on the cloud for this, we can determine whether somebody is trying to go into a malicious site or into a phishing site or a command and control or a warm site or a Tor exit node or, you know, a place that is known to, to, uh, to uh, uh, deliver malware or, you know, we can detect who is actually doing large un uploads or downloads of information of uh, places or application that you don't have sanctioned. Uh, so, and we provide all that information in a very nice GUI that you can actually make sense out of, uh, you know, which are the applications, which are the risky applications, which are the risky users, what is it that people are doing. In order to deal with the problem with user that is and password, in the cloud, we also provide all the services to do the right ways of uh, federating all these without you having to worry about that. So, for example, when a user logins into his uh, desktop using uh, Spinego, uh, what we do is that we the user actually selects from a catalog one of the sanctioned applications that, that you want them to use. For example, you, they say that you find them using a public Dropbox and say, well, no, we have a corporate deal with Box. We want you to actually use that from the catalog. So the guy goes into the catalog, and if he authenticated to Active Directory already, uh, uh, and probably he did to unlock his workstation, he, all he needs to do is click on that application on the catalog, and then through the cloud, who is going to look to that application as a service provider, so we look at the service provider to then, what we do is that we generate 
the right, uh, for example, Open ID Connect or SAML 2.0 assertion. So we add as the identity provider for the cloud service, so you don't have to worry about any of this. Uh, so when the guy leaves the organization, you know that that he's not going to be have the capability of uh, of going there. Also, if if you are worried about if you want to block the possibility of the guys going directly into the application when they are outside, you can actually force uh, redirection. So so if you try to go to this service directly, then the service will force you to go authenticate to Active Directory to let you uh, get in. If you cannot do that because the the service provider doesn't allow that capability. We we can also do uh, collect the logs from the from the uh, provider, and then we can make the correlation that hey, the guy log in into this uh, Office 365 and he did not go through the gateway. So therefore, we can again as part of that information, we can pass all that uh, all those details. Uh, we also have some very nice rules. We have SIM, the best SIM technology up there. And, and we, 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 we detect, for example, uh, too many uh, login failures or logins failures followed by logins, uh, 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 too many login failures followed by a uh, successful login, large uploads of, uh, of uh, data to unsanctioned apps, uh, people that go to risky sites, malicious sites, etc. We All that is notified to you again uh, via this uh, very nice uh, interface. Now, when when the one thing is that the traffic goes when uh, through our cloud in this case only to establish the session once the session is established the the people go directly into the specific application that they have uh, they have uh, actually uh, selected all these technology and a few other things are going to be talking again all you have to worry about is uh, you're going to be charged a few dollars per user per month. All the technology is completely transparent to you. All you get is that nice catalog and the capability of uh, uh, inform you uh, about all these uh, actions that are happening and the ability for you to define in the catalog which are the applications that you want your people to actually uh, 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 go to. Now, when we talk about phones and tablets, the problem is even bigger because they most likely will be using public wave Wi-Fi or Wi-Fi at home, or they will be going to the 3G or LTE network, which you have no visibility whatsoever. No, not even on that gateway that you have on the DMC, that traffic doesn't go there. You have no clue what they are doing. So and they are going, they are going directly, completely unmonitored and unsupervised into the cloud. How can we prevent that from happening? Well, what we do is that we allow the user to either self-enroll into the program or via, you know, we can also have this via any MDM type of application. Uh, but basically the user, very, even a very simple process with a QR code, uh, enrolls into, into a particular application, you receive an email, say, hey, you know, we have a box account that we want you to use instead of Dropbox. So click here. So he clicks there. Yeah, a very, again, a very simple process. He logs in and that process of logging in basically configures the VPN on the phone or it can be also IPsec or HTTP proxy. And again, this is going to depend on whether it's iPhone or Android and what type of device. And it's going to go to, again, to the closest node in the world for it. Where we have our IPSs already deployed, fed with the, all the intelligence from the X4, so we know if you are trying to go into a, into a particular uh, site. So all that traffic in this case goes through our node and then onto the whatever uh, web service that the person is actually trying to go. And, and in fact, if you actually would like to block some of that, then well, because our IPSs have that capability, we. We could actually do that and we have a notification services that is going to uh, inform the user why is it that he is being blocked I mean, because you know it's going to a site that has malware or we want them to use a different type of uh, of service and that is what is called uh, the solution to the mobile blind spot we also 
as we as the traffic goes there we still take from our IPSs all the logs and flows and we feed those into that engine that I, dis I discussed uh, to you before so, so it's part of, uh, of those nice uh, report and part of that uh, catalog all that fits into into the same system again all this transparent is a monthly fee and this is a very effective way of dealing with shadow IT and the mobile blind spot and remain compliant as people go into uh, these web services more and more